Hey everybody, Rob Cohey talking a little bit about what's new in Inventor 2011. Now, I just said what's new in Inventor 2011 and you're seeing Inventor Fusion on the screen, so what's going on? Well, with Inventor 2011, we've dramatically increased our ability to use Inventor Fusion uh, as uh, almost like an extension of your Autodesk Inventor toolset. Um, in some cases, uh, there, there'll be other cases where you want to use Fusion as a direct modeling tool um, or as a or as a base uh, base model editor uh, and we have a couple examples of that throughout this entire demonstration but I'm gonna go ahead and use fusion here in this example to model uh, to complete the design of this planetary gear pump system now the reason I'm doing that is because I have a choice whether or not I want to use a direct modeling application or a parametric modeling application uh, and that's that's unique to uh, to Inventor and Inventor Fusion. I have the ability to bounce back and forth between a parametric modeler and uh, a, a direct modeling application, like you're seeing here uh, with Fusion. Now, so far, I'm using pretty traditional um, parametric modeling techniques. I'm uh, I'm creating sketches and and doing extrusions and such. But here, what I'm really pointing out is the ability to kind of utilize Fusion for even parametric. Uh, modeling if you choose to. So here the direct manipulation tools like, you, like you're like you seeing now in Inventor 2011 of course are, are, are in Fusion and I can grab uh, a hold of some uh, some geometry here and perform extrusions um, do a symmetric extrusion here as I drag it up I click on a face and it automatically knows to do an extrude to that face. And the reason I'm using Fusion in this instance is, is A I can and B it's a great modeling application so let's just go ahead and in this example I'm going to do a symmetric and, and nine and a half divided by two. Who wants to do the math? Just go ahead and put the equation right into the feature. Now I've used marking menus so far on every single one of these features, either marking menu or direct manipulation icon. This time I'm going to use the marking menu as a as as a gesture. Now you didn't see the menu pop up there, but it was it was a gesture. I simply held down the right click, drag to the southeast, if you will. And based upon the, the, the objects that I had selected, I had a couple edges selected to do a fillet. Um, the, uh, the gesture of dragging to the southeast essentially told Fusion that, you know what, I, I'm, I'm going to do a Fusion here, or a, a fillet uh, in this example. Now take a look at this. Uh, I'm doing a, a circular pattern, and look at the real-time updates. Um, as I'm going through. So some nice tools inside of Fusion that, that, that make the modeling experience, uh, even for novice users, um, very comfortable uh, and, and, and very intuitive when it comes to, again, I'm going to do one of those gestures for a fillet. It's just all of the commands are essentially right at the fingertips. I'm not going to put a percentage down, but a very high percentage of the time, because I know you guys will will uh, will hold me to a specific percentage if I if I say 90% or, or what have you somebody's gonna say hey well it's actually 98.5 um, so I'll go ahead and forego the uh, the uh, the percentage so here I'm gonna go ahead and slice some graphics and as you can see I've got a little bit of interference here so I need to make uh, a little bit more of a design change to this component so notice the visibility control that I have in an assembly environment uh, it's not a right click turn on and off visibility it's it's sim simply a matter of turning on and off a light bulb um, and the ability to right click and and and, and um, isolate the components is is again extremely intuitive um, all the commands are essentially right at the fingertips and you know when I need to activate it's simply right click and activate a component to tell fusion this is the one I'm going to be working on now I need to cut out some material here for an eventual o-ring and I'll start a new sketch project some geometry and then draw the circle that's that's uh, going to represent the the profile for this sweep now the unique thing about this sweep is, is uh, as, as I began to play around with this was you know, normally on a sweep you need to have a uh, um, a path that either intersects the profile at some point in time, but you know, with Fusion here, I can just you know, slide that over to the midpoint, and then use uh, use the outside edge essentially as my rail. 
which I thought was was uh, very handy. Um, so here I can just kind of drag that out and get that real-time preview of what it's going to look like. Or I can finally, for the first time in this demo, go up to my uh, my ribbon here and tell it that I need to go to full path, cut it all the way, and there you go. So as you can see, the ability for me as a user to choose to use Fusion as a modeler has, has been uh, great. Now here's another example of of some of the things that I can do in Fusion. So I want to create a relationship between the outside faces of these. Now you can create equal distance uh, constraints in Inventor, but in, in, in this example I want to create a constraint that says those two faces are always going to be parallel to each other, collinear. So when I do a move face or something, or make it the same plane as uh, this other uh, this other hole, I have the ability to do that. Rather than doing move faces on all three of them, I created a constraint and told it to be flush with the outside hole. So the 3D constraints and the feature level constraints are actually the same command in Fusion. Now I want to point out that I'm back inside of Autodesk Inventor now. And I've got a base part here, or a, uh, uh, a simple component that I want to edit. And when I go to edit the base component, look what it's launching for me. Now by default, if you have F Fusion installed, it's going to go ahead and launch Fusion so that you can do your direct modeling edits on a base component, or dumb solid if you will inside of Fusion rather than doing it inside of Inventor if you choose to. Go ahead and return on to Inventor and as you can see it's made the changes and loaded it back into the assembly. Now the next thing I want to do is is something that uh, you may be more familiar with when, when it comes to working in either Inventor or Inventor Fusion um, and, and which one should I use when? Now what I've got here is I've got um, a user that has Inventor Fusion. Maybe they're in-house, maybe they're out of house, but I've sent them my Autodesk Inventor part. And what they're doing is they're going through and making a number of changes. So they're moving some faces here, they deleted uh, some features, you saw that they removed some holes. And here I'm going to use some move face on that edge and I, again I'm going to move face here reorient the UCS and do an exact edit add 30 degrees rotation uh, to that to that cut out there so I've made a number of, of, of changes here inside of Inventor Fusion and I'm gonna go ahead and save this off you know, what you're gonna note is that it's saving a DWG file uh, I opened up an Inventor IPT file but Inventor Fusion is saving off a DWG file and that's fine so my supplier, my partner, whatever is going to send me that DWG file. And now I'm going to go ahead and open it inside of Inventor. And what I'm going to open is the DWG file they sent. Now Inventor is going to take a look at, all right, I'm opening up a DWG file, but is there a part file associated to this? And sure enough, there is. So what it's done is that it's opened up the Fusion Change Manager. Now this, ladies and gentlemen, is, is, is the perfect balance between a direct modeling tool, Inventor Fusion, and a parametric modeling tool, Inventor. Here, the direct model edits are being displayed for me. What was, what was removed in red? What was changed in blue? And I have the ability through this change manager to go through each one of those features that, that have been changed and either accept them or reject them. I can either go through and say, you know what, apply all those treatments. Uh, my partner knew what I was talking about more than I did. Or I can go through like I'm doing here individually and really determine if those are actually the changes that I want to accept. Now this one here, I can go ahead and say, you know, I, I want that one. So I can either accept it in, in, the, uh, in the browser or I can go over in the graphics area and accept it there. Now take a look at this. Once I've accepted and gone through and, and applied all the treatments that I wanted to, I'm going to go back into Inventor. And, and I want to make sure that this actually changed the parameters of my component and not just added a dumb set. Look at that. It actually went through and made a parametric change to even the sketch. So like I said, the, uh, the perfect blend between a direct modeling 
uh, tools such as Inventor Fusion and a parametric modeling tool such as Autodesk Inventor. Only Autodesk has that one, folks. Have a great day.